ICUJP was formed in response to 9-11. We were troubled and profoundly saddened by the cries for retaliation. Yes, some response to that vicious attack was important, but not the devastation of war. We felt 9-11 demanded the work of justice. We disavowed the path that said our grief must lead to war. We refused to accept violence as the necessary consequence of our tragic loss. And over these 10 years, two positions have been dominant for ICUJP. One, religious communities must stop blessing war and violence. And two, recognizing the war system is deeply embedded in America. Nevertheless, we affirm our membership in one human family. And we have proclaimed over these 10 years that the sin, the evil of these wars in Afghanistan and Iraq is the belief that an American child is more precious and sacred than an Iraqi child. America's enormous resources of wealth and technology should be used for health and education and peacemaking, not for the wars of destruction in the building of an empire. Where have we been? Where are we now? What is the vision of the future that we long to create? Every day during Elul, we hear the sounds of the shofar, the ram's horn. May these sounds remind us of all of those whose lives were lost on the attacks on 9-11 and also in the wars that emerged in response to those attacks, both soldiers and civilians. May these sounds challenge us to ask what we have done over these years to bring healing to our world. And may these sounds empower us to work together for peace. for the wars and 41% of our children live in poverty in the United States of America. That is the greatest obscenity of our day. We say make jobs not war, make sense not war, make art not war, make anything not war. We're connecting the greed on Wall Street with the greed of war profiteers. And that peace power is the power that will work through us and work through everyone we come in contact with once we understand it's first within ourselves. When you dehumanize a whole race of people, a whole religion of people, a whole area of the world, just because they're brown, that you can treat them like they're not human, treat them that, like they don't exist, that this is somehow justified. But this is not just about my community of faith. It's not about my community of faith that's being affected by all of this. It's about my community of conscience. And we are called, all of us, to a different vision of the world, a vision in which the essential dignity and humaneness of every human being, whoever they may be, every human being is honored. We in the field of religion call that being made in the image of God, the divine essence of every human being. I want to urge that we put aside 
all the political fancies about these days. And instead, we unite around the notion that we must get in the way of the forces of spiritual wickedness, that we reduce this country to an oligarchy and end the experience of self-government towards the destiny of every man and every woman.